Hey, Nance. Well, we're live on Facebook, folks. And Nancy Kelly will join us momentarily. But as you can see, our guest coming up in about 10 minutes, Grammy-nominated lyricist, singer, songwriter, Lorraine Feather will be dropping into the Time Out Lounge to chat with Nancy Kelly and I. Hope you've had a nice weekend. I cannot believe that it is already the final Sunday in October. And uh, yeah, where, where, where has this long, long year gone? The good thing is, 2020 uh, only has about 60 some odd days to go. Um, and 2020 has certainly felt like a decade. Hey, there's Nancy. Here I am. I've been talking for the last like 30, 30 seconds. Well, I, I saw we were live on Facebook, so I thought one of us maybe should go live. Did you take, uh, did you take uh, the opportunity to share it to your page? I, no, I've not actually done that. So basically the first, nobody will ever uh, hear what I was saying um, uh, unless they were watching live. But um, I was just saying a good evening to our, was saying good evening to our, uh, our, our wonderful audience, letting them know how it's hard to believe that we have reached the, uh, the end of October. I mean, this is our final show into uh, October. I'm sharing to my page right now, by the way. Um, and I hope that um, Oh, that's the wrong one. I hope uh, people have had a nice uh, weekend. How, how has your how's your weekend been? Um, very good. I've been feeling good. Very, very, very good. Today I got a three cord of wood. I supplement my heat in my house with wood. I have a wood stove mm -hmm. in my kitchen. Okay. And it's heaven. It's a lot of work, but there is nothing like being in here in a snow, snowy, stormy night with the wood stove going. It's really good. And it supplements the heat. Like, like on a night like tonight, if I had the energy and had it running, the heater would not come on even down to the 30s the heater it would heat the whole house and it's tiny it's a little tiny stove but it's wonderful and i enjoy it and it's just yummy and delicious so i did that i got one cord in i need to get the other two in i'm a little it's it's good exercise really really good exercise i'll tell you what you always make the most of i mean sunday is a day that a lot of people just get lazy. You are always so productive on Sundays. I mean, well, you, I work six days a week. So t technically today is a day off for me. So I got to do all the house cleaning. I didn't today. Yeah. I well, have to do all the a... things that people do that own houses on Sunday or, you know, sometimes I have a Wednesday off, but very rarely I, what's happened to my schedule is really quite simple. Um, when I had my studio, when I would go into my studio, which was either in Rochester or in Syracuse, I was able to do four hours straight. But I have found sitting here at the computer doing Zoom lessons for four hours does not work. It's it's exhausting. I yeah. mean, it's really exhausting. Right. So I only do three in a day. So in other words, I had to spread them out more during the week. Right. I've been busy and I don't turn student. If I can fit a student into the schedule, I don't turn them down because I mean, that's money. <laughs> and, and for those who are curious, like roughly how many, how many students are well, you I working with it right now? I don't have one I had before COVID. I've yeah. probably got right. about 20 now. Man, well, I that's had, well, still I had close to 30 before. Mm. So I was doing four of them at once in the studios. And then I also was doing Zoom because I've been doing Zoom for years. I've been yeah, well, yeah. I mean, face, you, were, face you, were, you were Zooming before Zooming was hit. I've been Zooming right along. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know we talked on the phone. I mean, not all of your students are based in this area. I know you said you have a student who's in Los Angeles, correct? 
right now I have two two students out uh, west. Yeah. yeah, I have a student. I, I have two. I have two phone. in Florida. I mean, not all of your students are based in this area. I know you said you have a student. Oh no, I have them all over the world for, at different times. Right now I have two. two Oops, got to turn that. I was saying I'm hearing myself I'm on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have two students on the West Coast. Yeah, I have a couple in Florida. Okay, all right. I, I, I just had one. Uh, she just took a, a sabbatical. Um, she was in uh, North Carolina. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. The people, it's the word is getting out that I teach popular voice, which there's really very few people who teach popular voice. It's almost always classical training. And then and they, anybody... they work with jazz with that thing yeah. going on. Right. And anybody who joins us who is thinking about wanting to, I mean, are you, you, you would take on more students now? I mean, if I have were... a space right now, the studio's full. Oh, you're full. I okay. Can't. I right. mean, it's like, look at this. I'm working like five, six days a week. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, I have time during the day. I, I get up and do stuff, but you know, it's, it's a lot, man. Teaching, you know, I'll tell you why it's a lot because number one, because I care and I care deeply that these people take something away from their time with me. Yeah, I do not just go through motions. I care about them as people and and musicians. And anybody that's worked with me would chime in if they were here. They would chime in and say something about that. I no, wish they would. I wish they I, would. I get a little annoyed. I see people. I see other uh, jazz singers having um, master classes, and 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 I'm so surprised that no one's hit on me at all because I have a. I have almost a, 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 a unique to me approach, you know? No, I think it's fascinating, uh, or that's not the right word. I, 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 I just love the fact that you wanna see these people grow, not only as mus musicians, as artists, but as, pe you know, as, as people too. It's very true. Yeah, um, yeah. and that's why your students, past and present, adore you hey we finally have some people i, I was getting a little concerned so i didn't see oh, anybody oh my gosh no i i would if i was a mr public person i would be very interested and excited to talk with lorraine feather that she is a profound writer i just yeah. love her work i cannot wait to talk to her about her work i really i really admire her and um well, we are flocking. I've not ever met her, so it, so this is gonna. I'm going to be meeting. Her. I've never. No, I've never met Lorraine either. Although we have, in, we've done interviews. Uh, we did a couple of interviews in my radio days, but but I mean, the last time I think I did an interview with Lorraine was, uh, oh my gosh, uh, I I, de I definitely it, it was a few. Um, it was definitely a few albums ago. <laughs> Her most recent recording, and this is going to kind of, this will be a little segue into a, a song we're going to play from uh, her most recent release, uh, which is called Math Camp. Um, but yeah, my last interview with uh, Lorraine was, gosh, I don't know, could have been 10 years ago. And I know we, we have one right now. We had, um, oh, what's that? You're gonna have one right now. Well, and this time I'm gonna be able to see. I'm gonna see her too. I mean, because those were just over the phone. So this will be uh, the first time that I get to to see uh, Lorraine's lovely face, and and uh, she's got a beautiful smile, as do you. And and uh, and no, this is this is uh, one I've. This is look. I look forward to every show, and and uh, look. All credit to you for for tonight's guest. You were the one who told me about, I don't know, a week and a half ago, we got Lorraine for the 25th. I was well, so excited because she's yeah. um, she's not cut from the same cookie cutter. Oh, no. No. That's what I love. I mean, this is a whole other kind of approach to imp yeah. to a uh, inventive music. Yeah. And, I'm uh, very oh, excited about this. Oh, someone, Sue... Can you say her name? For yeah, well, Sue uh, Sue Mascalaris. I, I I've seen Sue in our shows before. I don't know if I met Sue personally, but yeah, Sue said that uh, Lorraine 
has uh, been a big influence in her writing. Why don't we play a little something? Uh, how about, uh, yeah, how about we play uh, uh, a short little play, song yeah, from... Let's play a little something. And from Math Camp, and then we'll, we'll bring on our guests. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Hold on here. <clears throat> I, it, it's so much... I need, a, I need my own producer. <laughs> Eventually, you... We'll, we'll oh, have. Uh, I did it wrong, did it wrong I, again. I feel like we'll have a producer for this show. Huh? I did it wrong. I got a computer sound. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Hold tight. It's coming. <gasps> My love is like a good, good book. I pray will never end. My love is like a letter, nearly two tenths to send. So doting yet so dry, you see, I stutter with delight. And I will love my sweetie till early light is night. Love can fill your every cell, and what do you know there's none? Forever never enter the equation. The words it once had meaning, the meaning you mistook. The sonnet you admired devolved into gobbledygook. Then you dare to leap once more, the one time when the landing doesn't spoil the fall. And it all adds up. Maybe you need to bear the dread the die To find someone you get on with Like a house of fire And it all adds up As Richard Feynman once said I have approximate answers and possible beliefs And different degrees of certainty about different things But I'm not absolutely sure of anything And there are many things I don't know anything about So And given this, the morning sun, the midnight kiss I at love. I, I I did invite her on, so she should. She, I see. I'm here. I'm oh, here. To you, my love. Okay. Um. And we don't see you. Have to speak. Well, we, you could, you could we, take. All right. No my worries. video is stopped. All right. Mm -hmm. I I should leave and and rejoin. Okay. okay let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. okay. Boy, Nance, I was, I was, I was hoping we'd get through that whole song. Oh, we can play uh, more. I have a couple other, um, I have a couple other things up in the queue that I want. Oh, oh that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, no, uh, I, it's funny. I uh, when you told me that Lorraine uh, was going to be our guest and she will be rejoining us momentarily with video, we hope. Um, but I, I thought you guys had had met one another at some point. But you say you... Uh, no, no. I just I, I but just I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a fan. I mean that's it's that simple. <clears throat> we uh, we jazz singers. Um, not only do we we listen to um, I listen to a lot of instruments, but I do listen to the uh, the other singers that are out there. Of course, of course. And, and I and I, some 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 people really catch my ear because it's so unique and different. Um, okay, I'm oh. I'm dialing in. Yeah, it says but, I'm live. Yeah, but we don't see your face. All right. We're seeing i we're just seeing iPhone. So hey, you've this used way. your phone, Eric, many times for this. Can you? Is there some maybe little clue you could? No, do? Okay, here, here. here you are. <laughs> I, I well, know this well, woman. Um, this is an intelligent woman. I knew she didn't need my assistance to. I've done, I've done this before. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here. good evening, Miss. Good Beth. evening. Well, How are you? This is my first time meeting you, and I've since I've known you'd come to Rochester. I thought, oh, someday we'll definitely get together. We should. We should have coffee or something. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That will happen. Well, we hope it will happen. I know. You know, we're yeah. all hoping that. And you have actually spoke with Eric Cohen many times. I didn't know. Well, I I don't think she remembers, but we had oh, some. Well, then why don't you? Well, I'll say it because last time you went off on some other things. <laughs> Well, no, Eric. We, I, I, of course, I know you from from W A E R. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, I just know that you've probably done your share of interviews over the years, and and I was saying to Nancy that I don't think I don't remember the last interview we did. I don't recall the the album. I think we we spoke after uh, Cafe Society oh, came out. Oh my God. That was like, that was almost my first one of this whole bunch. That was like, 
18 yeah. years ago. <laughs> well, okay. Well, we, we've definitely, we've definitely spoken we're more due. recently than that, but, but it just yeah. goes to show that I, I was playing your music at WA. I was there for 20, close to 25 years and, and well, you know, Cafe yeah. Society. We don't have a jazz station anymore here. Unfortunately, yeah, the station is not jazz anymore. Yeah. Mm. The, I mean, uh, we, well, there, there's one Marine, thankfully in Rochester, thankfully, and I'm sure you. Yes, have, I've been there. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah, I was going to say you probably met Derek and all the gang over there. I, I have. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Love that station. WGM yeah. GMC. They're they're wonderful. He's he's great. He's just a dyed in the wool jazz fan. He he. Oh, asked if he could work at that station when he was too young to even do that. So it's been kind of his life's purpose. Wow. Yeah. My cat, Albert, is well, possibly- You know I can't famous. wait to meet Albert. I'm a kitty person. Is he sweetheart? <laughs> it's okay. We've had pets on the show before. Oh. Look at, ah. Albert. Hi, Hello. Albert. So is he, uh, He's he's clearly Siamese. I mean, yeah, yeah. I I think he's um uh, I think he's a mix. I adopted him from Houston. We met on Facetime chat, and um, he's a mix because his his eyes are brown sometimes, and then in other lights they're blue, or when they start to cross they turn blue. So I I think he's mixing. He doesn't have the the Siamese meow. He has kind of a little dainty. Oh, meow. he doesn't even. Ah! <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> I've had three or four Siamese cats. We love them in my family. They're and almost they have, like dogs. They have a personality that can't be beat. I mean, it's just yeah. unreal. Yeah. I know. Mine, mine, he does he talk to you a lot? Um, yes, he does. Yeah. He talks yeah. to me and meows, and then of course I have conversations with him in which I answer for him, just because <laughs> I'm alone here. <laughs> Wait, wait, but do you do the kitty voice? Like, what, what's the matter with the baby? <laughs> well, I, I go into a slightly higher pitch, but not super high. It's like, you know, would you like some dry food? Yes, mommy, you know. Yeah, well, I call myself this mommy. kind of subtle. <laughs> oh, hey. God, we love them. Hey, look, full yeah. disclosure, I, I had a dog. I, I mean, I had a dog, and whenever I talked to my dog, which uh, who's named Jazzy, uh, my voice would change too. I think when we talk to our pets, our, our voice goes up a register. It's a yeah. thing. Yeah. And you know, I have a conversation with myself saying, what if this annoys her? This must, uh, maybe it annoys her that I talk in this voice. And she's well, offended because I'm so uh, condescending to her. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm sure she's fine with it. What's her name? Oh, oh my cat Kitty's name is Abigail Squeaker. <laughs> Albert has a, has two names too. It's Albert Albert Einstein. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> I think Albert Einstein and Abigail Squeaker need to have a play date at some point. He now, unfortunately he was rehomed as they call it because he did not get along with other cats. He, oh. he I adopted him when he was four, and oh. the whole situation is a little murky. You know, oh, like yeah, I found out all yeah. out about him when he was already on the truck on his way to the East Coast to meet me. Um, so I, some of it I couldn't read, you know, he'd been declawed in the front, which is a shame. And they put him on Xanax and then they, he didn't get along with other cats, but by that time he was four. And so like, you know, I don't know, but we were meant for each other. He's just very sweet. And so, so I, let me just ask this real quick o on your latest recording, you do have a song called some kind of Einstein, but is that, that's not yes. for Al, that's not for Albert, is it? No, I, I. As in Albert, your your cat. Understood. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it was kind of all at the same time. I was living in Worcester, Mass. at that time, and um, I had gotten interested in physics. I'm very bad at physics, also geography, history, mm. algebra, chemistry. I'm bad at everything. I'm except, with you. Uh, oh no, English. you are. I too am right. interested in physics. Diagram so what you're saying. But I, I became fascinated with physics and I would read these books just to hope that I would grasp something. And I, every now and then I'd get something. Oh, Albert's just like streaking around the house right now. But um, I was reading a book called Einstein, His Life and Universe by Walter Isaacson. 
and I just thought it was it was fascinating and so I decided I wanted to write oh it was because of this line in the tv show Frasier for which um, my ex-husband Tony Morales used to lead the the warm-up band that he was um having an argument with some woman and Frasier says uh he, she says why don't can't you just have fun he says fun fun was my middle name in math camp so I thought Oh. What a great title for an album, and I'm going to have physics oh. as a kind of a metaphor for modern romance. So I did an album called Math Camp, and the last song in the album is uh, some kind of Einstein, which I wrote with Shelley Berg, one of my close co-writers. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also I also know Shelley as well, probably yeah. not as well as you do, but we have worked together a couple times out in L.A. before he moved to Miami. Yeah. Right. When we, we were both in L.A. Uh, when I met Shelley and we, we did quite a few gigs and that he, he played stride piano with me. He didn't really know how to play stride. And I had done this Fats Waller album and he said, sure, I could learn it. <laughs> so uh, we did a stride gig and then a, a lot of other ones. And we started writing. But then I moved to the San Juan Islands of Washington State and Shelley moved to Miami. So we were as far apart as we could possibly be and technically be on the same continent. But he and uh, Russell Ferrante and um, Eddie Arkin is my close friend, co-producer and most frequent co-writer. They've been the, like my little gathering of, of collaborators and Dave Grusin sometimes too, over the last few years. That's a pretty nice company. They're cute. Yeah. It, yeah, they're all wonderful and creative and and, um, and also very wonderful we, um, people, which which, you know, is nice, too. Oh, yeah, they oh, are. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's me well, and Eddie. I mean, listen, I, I figured at some point if Lorraine doesn't bring up the name Eddie Ark and I'd be shocked. So I had a picture ready of uh, of you and Eddie. And, and uh, for, for folks who don't know much about Eddie, uh, talk about your friendship with him uh, and, and how how the role he played on Math Camp. Well, we, we've been working together for, I think, 35 years. Wow. It's, it's, it's almost beyond belief. But um, we, we've we written, to, we, we wrote uh, songs together that were recorded by other people, among them Barry Manilow, but who, uh, whom Eddie produced for a while. And we wrote a song that was on um, a TV special that, Barry Manilow did with Phyllis Hyman and Kid Creole and the Coconuts and an assortment of people. And the group I was in at the time called Full Swing. And Eddie and I wrote a song called Big Fun that we performed on that show, like singing and dancing down Swing Street. It was called Big Fun on Swing Street. And we worked together on and off. He did TV shows and he produced other artists, but we started becoming really close co-writers when I began writing with uh, like living people. I did some albums that were Fats Waller's music, Duke Ellington's music, some big band stuff. And then I began to want to write with uh, musician composers I knew. And Eddie and I just became uh, just the, the closest of co-writers and friends. And I, I talked to, I, I am working on a new project now. And when this is going on, I usually talk to him like, four to six times a day, <laughs> which wow. I have been all this week. Oh my. Wow. And yeah. when you say produce, uh oh, something happened to my wait a second, you guys, you all disappeared on me. Did We're we? here. Well it's my fault. Um how I was about now? Say, Can you see now how about now? Can you see me? Where'd you oh, go? Albert, stop it. God, sorry. Where did you well, go? Well, that was just me. I'm just playing with you. Oh don't play with me because oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that, wait, I lost. I had a train of thought. An executive producer is the person who who has the money. So when you say producer, his role is no. I mean, he we create the album together. It's not. It, it's a. Um, it's it, it. It's not like he he gives me money to do it. Oh, I'm, I'm um, clarifying that for people that are listening. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, Eddie, Eddie, and I talk about about the tunes we write a lot of them together and I show him what I'm doing with the other um the other co-writers they all know each other 
and um, I send little phone dem memo demos back and forth to Eddie and, and uh, describe to him what I'm doing. And we, we just talk about all the different aspects of it and um, go into the studio together, which of course now we can't uh, because of COVID. Mm. I was gonna go to Los Angeles in April and I forget when I canceled that trip, but it was it was early on enough that I went, well, I guess I could just go and bring a lot of hand sanitizer, but mm -hmm. maybe it's not a good idea. No. Uh, so, it, it, we have a studio in it, where I have my teaching studio in Syracuse. So, so, you know, I don't live in Rochester and I don't live in Syracuse. I live in between the two cities. On yeah, the I was going to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to a studio called The Green Room, which is really near my house in Rochester and was recommended i'm familiar with that i have i don't i can't say that i've been there um i think i've heard the name though well they have a they they have a nice board and a, a good isolation room and a, a, a neumann mic that i like the one, the one that we like wow. the one that we like one the of the ones that we, that we like, like. <laughs> the u87 and um so I, I went in there, I, I often, the last three albums, I'll go in and do some of my background vocals because I harmonize with myself a lot. Um, I do some of those in advance because then the musicians, it kind of brings them into the atmosphere. Yeah, I have so many, the, I have so many questions. Just keep going because I have so many. Of the tune and then also this talking thing I do, I do some of that in advance. So we began doing that, but now, it's it's complicated, but to to my watch just spoke to me. I don't know what it was saying, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, basically, I'm, I'm going to have LA musicians playing these tunes uh, soon. I've recorded some some vocals, and we're we're going back and forth. And yeah, we'd be able to do this remotely still. We we can do it remotely. There's a studio that I like and have worked at, Eric Astor's Hideaway Studio in Chatsworth, and he can have up to five people there um, properly distanced. So it's just, it's, but it's, it's not one of those things where one person at a time is just going to go in and we just layer it one, 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 one. Yeah, one. like all these Zoom videos that we see. With it, it's, it's, not, it, it's, not, it, it's not quite like that. But just suffice to say, it's, gonna, it's different. But we're we're moving ahead, and the creative process still is what it is. I know everybody, you sent me this, and I was just blown away. Let me share this. This everybody, once I share here, uh, Lorraine says this is the. Oh yeah. Oh. That's. This First the cover, then the album. <laughs> and, and is that Little Lorraine? No. That is the work of a, a person, a man named Michael Ticino, who's a photo surreal artist. I was doing an album called Tales of the Unusual. And uh, my husband, Tony, said, you know, there's some people on Flickr who do what I think you're looking for because I wanted to be in some sort of mystical setting for, for the album cover, like be photographed in front of white paper and then have something around me that would be kind of spooky. And he said, there are a lot of people on Flickr who do that. And it's a whole group like photo surreal imagery. So I contacted uh, Michael who lived in Pennsylvania at the time. He, he liked my work and I, it, another person I, I, I have worked with but never met he he did this unbelievable album cover for this um, album, Tales of the Unusual, that featured my then dog, Sterling, photographed on Orcas Island, me in Santa Monica, um, an arboretum in Devon, Pennsylvania. Behind me, he put a Creative Commons toadstool under me to sit. Anyway, it, it was really trippy, and I, I just loved it, and he did some others in the same vein. Oh, this, this is trippy. I, I have to admit that I know what that's like. So, did did you did wow. you did is this your conception, Lorraine? The, the, and then he kind of this, put it together for you. 
No, what, what happened was he did three albums with me and we worked on them together, album covers. And then I said, well, I'm, I'm doing a, a new one. Can you, um, can you work with me on it? Somebody else did Math Camp, a, a, a photographer from, uh, from Worcester. But um, I, I, he said, Lorraine, I'm retiring. It was kind of odd because he's younger than I am. And he just said, I just, I'm just not gonna do this anymore. But you can have any of my art uh, and you can just use it. Mm. And this particular piece is called Dolly. Oh, oh yeah. It, she got the yeah, because she's holding a doll, but it, yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty strange. I know I, I showed it to um, a friend of mine who said, "Wow, that's kind of a David Lynch vibe." Uh, <laughs> I was, love it. I love I it. Was, it has layers of emotion to it, and it brings just looking at it makes you uh, uh, go places. You know, your mind just goes places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking David Lynch too, Lorraine. Were you? <laughs> yeah, I was. It totally yeah. has that David Lynch vibe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope that the, I hope the music has that effect too. It's 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 about um, it's not a COVID album. I wrote most of the lyrics a, a year and a half ago, and then some at the beginning of this year. But it's about I had just come out of a I won't get into it, but a really bad situation in Worcester and left abruptly in the dead of winter, and there was a snowstorm and everything. And um, I decided to move here because I have friends oh, here. It's oh, just, please go through this story because I. It was. It's important. just an impulsive, an impulsive thing. I I was leaving. I was leaving Worcester. I, I decided, as I said, to move just abruptly because something bad had happened, and I lit. I had no idea where I was going to go. I don't like hot weather. Uh, I have friends on the west coast. Who, like somebody offered me their their house to stay in in Palm Desert, which was incredibly kind, but I knew I wouldn't want to settle there because I just I don't I don't care for hot weather. Not, LA is is expensive, and so I was just kind of casting about for well someplace else in New England or New Hampshire. Or I have friends in Vermont, and I I called Mark Waters, who's an old friend of mine and who used to write cartoon music songs with me for My Little Pony and All Dogs Go to Heaven and various projects uh, for Hasbro and MGM Animation. And he now teaches at Eastman. Mm. He and his wife, Vanessa, live in Pittsburgh. So I called him. I was just, I was hysterically crying, very emotional. And I was like crying and calling all these people. And, and he was, they were watching some show, might've been Chicago, but anyway, he went out to the lobby, said, what happened? Well, I'm uh, uh, very upset. He said, come stay here. You might like Rochester. It's a very cool town and you can just stay in our spare room and decide if you like it. So Is in the mean- Did you do that? Huh? Is that what you did? You, you I did, but by the time I got there, I had already rented an apartment site on scene because I had made friends with their realtor who got Mark an apartment when they were still looking and he was teaching at Eastman, right? And um, we just kind of hit it off on the phone. She also has a cat with, had a cat with two names, Elizabeth Taylor. And uh, I said, uh, Albert uh, will attack me during the night. I need a two bedroom apartment with bedrooms on each end in, uh, you know, some like an old, an old place, but not ratty and in a safe neighborhood because I haven't been, I haven't had a car in a few years and I love not having a car. So she called me and all my stuff is getting moved out of the house. It's very chaotic. And I, I have Albert going to, to some place. Um, and I booked him for a place in Rochester. I just thought I was going to be looking around. And she said, I found this place in the historic district. It's in an, um, a Victorian building and it's got the decorative ceilings and they've just renovated it. And plus it was February. So no place was available till June. And I was gonna stay with Albert Nick in an extended stay America, which is like, you know, awful. <laughs> Sorry, extended oh, stay America. But <laughs> <laughs> so she said, I found this place and utilities are included in and to, there's a bedroom on either end. And if you don't take it, someone else is going to take it tomorrow. I went, okay, I'm in. I'm moving to Rochester. So I uh, PayPal'd her the deposit and, and I came here. Mm. 
So, so far, and I'm dying to ask you this because I was, I am from Rochester. That's where I'm from. I was born there. My yes. daughter was born there. Don't Represent forget. Rochester. So what do you think of Rochester? It's a very special place. It's a, a good place to be an artist. I, I love the old buildings and the big trees and the butterfly habitat and Highland Park. Oh my God, the Lilac Festival. Mm. The, the lilacs are my, are my favorite flowering tree and magnolias as well. It's a, it's a, a pretty place and it, it's got a nice energy to it. And in fact, when I was meeting Mark um, for coffee near Eastman, uh, I forget the name of that place. It's right, right on that block. But uh, I, I was waiting for the, the realtor to drop off, off my key. And this woman was sitting next to me and we, we struck up a quick conversation. She said, could you watch my stuff while I run out and get my key from this lady at the curb? And moving here, she said, you're gonna like Rochester. It's got the culture of a big city, but it's a small one. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of culture. There's a lot of, of, of educational institutions, including the esteemed Eastman School of Music. Yeah. It, and we've got a lot of people, a lot of the guys that I work with, of course, also teach there at the, at the Eastman. I, I believe you've met Bob Snyder. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes, he's wonderful. Friday. Yeah, so those, yes. and they're, they're just such great guys and they're, very, they're highly educated musicians. So it's, uh, it's a really good situation. But there's all, look at the festival. Have you, how long have you been here? Have you seen the festival? Uh -huh. Yes, I went to the festival. Um, Russell and the and Yellow Jackets were playing there last year, so I, I saw all that. I, I was here long enough before the pandemic hit to experience a lot of Rochester. Mm. Mark and Vanessa and I used to go out to dinner every couple of weeks. There are a lot of great restaurants here, and I've, I've gone to the to the public market and the organic market. Um, the Science Museum. I'm, I'm right down the street from the Mag, and it, it's 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 great. I I don't mind winter. I didn't know <laughs> that Rochester is actually the snowiest city in the whole country. Wait know? a minute. Though. I don't know. I think we I got, don't know about I think that. We got you beaten, sir. Right, of, of a certain size, <laughs> Eric. Of a certain size. All right. Oh, okay. All right. We can we can, we can go. Yeah, there's there are parameters. <laughs> All right. Well, Syracuse gives Rochester a run for its money every year. Believe me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I it's well, our, I live in between Rochester. I'm 65 miles uh, east of Rochester, and 42 miles uh, it it takes me to get to Syracuse. So I'm not near anything, and I'm so uh, okay. Yeah, I'm so uh, okay. With some interesting people. Because I was going to say, why don't you? Why don't you drop by, but you're not close at all. No, I'm not, but I will. Yeah, but wait, my daughter lives, my daughter and grandson and son-in-law live in Rochester, right near Highland Park. Oh, well, I'm near Highland Park. So we'll, sometime we'll, we'll meet up. We have to, we have now, to. Yeah. Now, just to clarify, did you say, I, this is a Rochester question. Did you say you were down the street from the MAG? The Memorial Art Gallery. Oh, okay. See, so yeah, that's, that's, I, do, I was not aware what the MAG was. Now I do. Now I know. I knew Nancy. Yeah. Knew. Okay. No, I didn't. I never heard it called the Meg. Because I don't. I, really? That's what everybody everybody referred to it as when they were telling me. Okay. I have, uh, Lorraine, when I turned eighteen, I left. I went on <laughs> with a rock band. And I never came back. I know that you have. Yeah. I haven't lived in Rochester in a long time. In little spurts, I've lived in Rochester, and I am now yeah. entertaining the idea of moving back there. Because I'm so far out in the sticks, it's a, it's, it's hard. It takes me a while to get in there, and the winter is not a good place to be driving around here. Yeah, I, I don't mind snow, but I, I don't like walking on ice. Who does? Oh. And no. in fact, the realtor had a, 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 a previous apartment for me that was very cool and had a lot of nice amenities and a lot of copper in the kitchen. But she was waiting there for the. Um, the landlord and she said Lorraine I'm calling you I have to leave it's it, it the ice has not been cleared this isn't a good place for you I'm not even getting out of my car 
which I appreciated because they do clear the ice where I'm living. And it, it's a great place. I did have a squirrel in my apartment once. And also- Oh, you, you wrote some and, things about little friends. And, and also also a bat. Don't say it. <clears throat> don't say it. Oh my yeah, God. I'm so scared. No, don't say it. I have so I many bats. I know, Man Nancy has some, some, oh, God. some uninvited guests in her apartment. In oh her my house. God. You did? Well, I my house is almost 200 years old, so there's lots of little crevices and things that need. It's an old building. It's it's a historical building. It it's, was the portmaster's house on the bay. It's, it's cool, but we discovered that we think. And I had a bat. Oh, I had sometimes two bats a summer. Ooh. And get out! I'd be sitting watch TV and fluff, 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 fluff. You'd fly by, and I'd be like, oh boy. And I've learned how to get them out. I used to panic and scream and screech, you know, and, and I've learned how to calm down and get them out. I turn the turn the light on in the back porch, open the door, and he will go find that. And then I close the door and let him out from there. But boy, I had one fly by my. I don't, I don't want to be the way I am about uh, creatures in the house because it's just it's inconvenient. I do love old houses. They go, oh, what do you care about mice? You've got Albert. All right, well, I don't want Albert killing mice in the house. I did in my first apartment in Worcester have a mouse and I just screamed and ran into the to the hallway and I called a couple of people and I literally I wouldn't go back in until the handyman had fetched oh, the wait. mouse and he showed it to me with his little head poking out he said Lorraine look and the thing is if it were in a cage I I used to take care of wildlife in California, the wildlife way station, little possums and raccoons oh, wow. and birds. And if a mouse were in a cage, I would happily pick it up and pet it. Oh, and yeah, feed they have it. No, they're not dangerous. But it's just see, seeing it as a, as a surprise. <clears throat> oh, my cat across the across and puts it on the bed. It's nice. But you would love, yeah. I have a thing, I have a thing. So, once again, old house, so I have mice. I have found these wonderful little humane traps. And you put the little peanut in the end and they crawl in to get it and it closes. And then I take them way up in the woods. And so far this year, no mice. No. But it's, I, I can't believe we're talking like we're being girls now, Eric. We've left you right. We're I, I, I just, I'm, I'm feeling it's just a very strong I, desire to change the subject. I yeah, right. Well, here, I'll change the subject. So I want to read a comment um, from the chat. Uh, some really nice comments. Um, uh, a woman, Sue Mascalaris, who's joined our show before, uh, I think before you came on the show tonight, um, Sue said that she, uh, you're a big <clears throat> influence in her writing. Ah. And Sue also said that she first heard you uh, in, uh, and I have it, uh, I have it here. She first heard you in, uh, in this group. Whoa, yes. Full uh, swing. Full swing, yes. That's how, uh, and that's that's a picture, I believe, from the Rainbow Room. Yeah, the Rainbow Room. That's Steve March, and okay. uh, Charlotte Crossley. Okay. And okay. Um, Steve is uh, Mel Tor Mel son. Oh, Steve March. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Steve March Torme. And then his right. his dad, uh, um, his stepdad was was um, Hal March, oh. of the of the game show. Right, right. And um, I, I knew Charlotte, Charlotte Crossley from Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm. We were both we were both in that show when we were in our 20s. And then we re-met <clears throat> at the auditions for this group Full Swing, which was headed up by the, a, a pop producer named Richard Perry. And um, we auditioned for him and Joel Silver, who's a, a movie producer, is very famous. He's been imitated on Saturday Night Live. Because yeah, I know. Yeah. So um, they just had this idea of a, a vocal group in, in front of a big band. So we, we did an album for them and I was with them for eight years. And, and that was when I really started writing lyrics, which is the thing that I feel I was kind of meant to do right, more right. than anything on well, that earth. I want, to play, I want to play a little something I found some things. I found a YouTube page that has quite a nice array of all your uh, all your tunes. I just want to, to play this a little bit of this one. The rules don't apply. Uh, love the love the lyrics, and Thank I you. 
I want to talk about how you're building. I want to talk about your process and how you're building. And if someone, are you explaining to someone what you want to hear going on? While, while the, are you writing the melodies aside from the lyrics? You're writing. No. Do you want me to answer the question before yeah, you play please this? Do, please do. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is, um, this, this song is not, it, it's not a usual song for my album. The, the music is by Eddie Arkin. And this is something that um, we were commissioned to do by Warren Beatty. I had sung back up on his Dick Tracy movie with um, Cheryl Benteen and Janice Siegel from the, the Manhattan Transfer. Oh, them, of course, yeah. Sure. And then um, over the years, I would send him my albums because like, well, this is a famous person and maybe he'll ask me to do a song for one of his movies sometime. And he did, and eventually he just, he, he called me and, um, and asked if, if I would and told me what the story was about. So this is, this is different, but with, with Eddie, almost all the time, um, it's lyrics first. So I, I go in and I, I give him something and then he plays around with ideas I mean, now we, we've been writing on the phone, which is amazingly no problem at all. But but we got together at his house and we tried out some things and Warren liked it. But then years went by without the movie getting started and financed. And eventually in 2016, it came out. It was just a huge flop, but I was really happy to have her song in the movie and it was, it was exciting. This, this was a Howard Hughes film, correct? <clears throat> yeah. It was a Howard Hughes film. Uh, Lily Collins was in it. Okay. Uh, Alden Ehrenreich okay. and um, and Warren's wife, Nat I'm, Benning. I met Benning, yeah. Yeah, I'm, was I'm in sorry it. And, if, and sorry was it. On Warren. Yeah, was it. yeah, I, I I know. We we did get a we got a Critics Choice nomination. That was the, the main little sort of. But but also it was exciting because I got to be on some panels and Good. and. and um, and talk about the film and go to New York and and uh, go to the premiere. So I, I'm very grateful, you know, and we got paid. So. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so do you are you do you play an instrument? No, I don't play an instrument and I don't read. Oh, you read <laughs> books about I read books. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking she was. <laughs> Yeah, I don't read at all. <laughs> yeah, right? No, no. She's, she's anti library, you know. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <clears throat> I don't I don't read music, but I I uh, I can I can read a little bit like if I I see the number of sharps and or flats, I know what key it's in and I can see the notes going up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that it is that is math. I explain to people all the time. It's just math. Yeah. Pretty easy to figure out, actually. You want to play some I of the song? Well, I was going to share this and ask yeah. her maybe she would pick something uh, that that she'd like us to play because. Um, Gosh, there's so much. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. I was just going to pick this one because I heard it today and it fell in love with the lyrics. I also the lyrics don't apply. Yeah, I love these lyrics. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Love it. I. I I love how intelligent it is. Everything that you do, all these lyrics are just so, um, and I, the whole thing of you doing this uh, talking thing, the poetry, I mean, that's been around for years, but it's so great that somebody is keeping it alive the way you are. It's, uh, it's important. It's almost like a, a form of rap in a way, you know? Well, you it's, it's not exactly rap because it isn't usually <clears throat> rhythmic, but it, it, it's, it's just weird. I started doing it um, when I, I, I did an album in the late 90s that was mostly electronic. And I, I worked on, Eddie worked on it with me, a writer named Joe Curiel, um, my husband, Tony. And we wrote a lot of quirky songs together. And I, I just started talking, kind of monologues, you might call them. And I, I, don't, I don't know uh, why, it just sort of came to me and it, it was fun and uh, it just, um, you know, amusing to me. Or I would say something that meant something. I, I don't know, I, I've just done it ever ever since. 
Wow. Is, there, is there any, can you see these, Lorraine? Is there any of these that you'd like us to play here? Well, do you want to play some of the rules don't apply? I, I just love those lyrics. I want I want people that are watching the show and thinking and, about writing and, and, and seeing how wonderful. I hope we don't get an ad. John Catco. I'll have to not. <laughs> now you what did you I, expect? Now you know who I voted for. There's always an ad. <laughs> what do you? Do you want to go to another song in hopes well, that maybe and, you don't and, be and, and Nancy, there's another song on that list. Sorry, John. There's another song on that list right, that now. somebody made a comment about, but, but... Okay, here we go. Well, go ahead and play some I'm of the... i play a little bit of this. I want people to hear how beautiful the... Uh... Sorry, wait. It. Yeah. Terribly blue. Was it far too late to do what I dreamed I would do? He thought. I'm sorry, everybody. It's all me screwing it all up. It's all right. For a moment, then he answered. He said the rule. Don't apply to you. He said it very simply and quietly, too. But as if there wasn't any doubt at all that he knew, he gave me a gift that I would treasure. He said the rules don't apply to you. In the movies we see, in the shows on TV, and in anthems passionately sung, there's a message that you've got to keep believing in yourself but they generally mean if you're young yeah, right? is it written in the air as it seems to be that we haven't long at all to find our destiny I'll always remember to be grateful that the rules don't apply to me. It's just beautiful. It that's really is. A, that's R Russell Ferrante playing. Yeah. I was wondering if it was, uh, yeah, Russell or, or if that was Shelly, but yeah, Russell sounds wonderful there. It's just yeah. Beautiful. Now you didn't, it, that, that, that also that melody is, came from. Uh, that's Eddie, yeah. Eddie Yard. But <clears throat> yeah, I want to, ha I have questions about your singing be, being that I, uh, am also a singer and a vocal coach. Um, you sound almost as though you've had some training, some vocal training. Um, I, I have, but not a lot. I, I didn't consider that I had much of a voice when I was in school. I started singing just as, because I had a good ear and I was trying to be an actress and I was always out of work. I, I waitressed everywhere in New York and I, I just fell into singing with top 40 groups. And then <clears throat> at a certain point when I was around 30, uh, somebody heard me singing at a club in Los Angeles and, and told my then boyfriend, you know, she could really benefit from a, some, a, some vocal coaching because she has problems with her break. So I went to somebody who was one of those Seth Riggs people. Yeah, that's the style I teach. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's what worked for me because I don't, I don't belt, I don't sing loudly. And so I took a few lessons with this guy and then I got the Singing with the Stars, Seth Riggs rec recordings, and I've been vocalizing to them for decades now. Uh, it just, it, it suits me. I, I do it regularly. 
and it's helped me a great deal uh, with my break. So I don't, I don't have any, any great puffed up idea of, of myself as being a, fa having a fantastic instrument, mm -hmm. but I, I just try and be as, you know, uh, in the pocket as I can, as tuneful as I can, and just ex express myself as well as I can, which of course is especially important because they're my lyrics and my co my co writer collaborators music. So I want it, I want it to come yeah. across. I think you have a beautiful voice. You oh, thank you. You. You, you have a beautiful voice. I <clears throat> I don't I never had a great voice. You and I share something. We we're interested in what we're singing about. You have a you have a wonderful voice and well, style. Well, it's nice to say that. I I I find it a, a, a bit brassy at times and annoying. But you know, I think <laughs> we all have our little things that yeah. bother us about our voices. But I don't I, say she's too I, self critical. You, you, you tell a story, girl. You tell a story, and I can oh. hear this. What I what we want when we listen to a singer is we want to experience what that is. I, and I talk about this all the time. What is what does this person feel like that's talking about the rules don't apply, you know, to me? There, there's there's a positive side to that, and then there, if you listen to those lyrics, you can see, you know, yeah. there's also a very well, sad. yeah. It, it, the song is that particular song is very important to me, and Eddie knows this. We've known each other for a long time because people think that there's a big time limit on doing what you want. I've spoken in my travels to like um, a, a 25 year old guy at the rental car company who said, well, I'd really like to do such and such, but I just feel like it's too late. I go, it's too late. You know, at the time I was whatever in my fifties. And um, it's, it's just not true. I, I've given up in my mind many, many times in doing in the, the idea that I could do something fulfilling and get any kind of, um, not acclaim necessarily, but just reach people. And it, it happened so much later than I ever would have expected. I'm not saying that I, I'm a huge success, but I, I have, have found working on what I do so much more gratifying as the years have gone by. And I, I want people to understand that you, you can just psych yourself out of thinking you can do something because you, you think that you're too old or you think you've been at it too long or you think you don't have the right elements. And um, so that, that song was extremely personal to me I and reflects conversations I've had. That's why it spoke to me because I'm going through a thing like that right now. Yeah. I'm going through that right now, you know, when the world seems to belong, the jazz world seems to belong to very young people, you know, and it's... Yeah. Uh, hey Nance, can you bring can you bring up that list again? Uh, oh, you, absolutely, yes. Because, because there was another song that was on there, and we actually had somebody uh, comment on the song earlier. Oh, let's, let's hear it. Have, what is it, Eric? Um, well, let me see. Uh, that's okay, uh, that's well, Matt Camp. Right there, right where your arrow is pointed, is a song called uh, "Very Unbecoming." Mm -hmm. Ah. And we had it. Uh, we we had a woman. Not that easy. Oh, there's the, we had a woman earlier in the chat uh, and I said, I, I knew we would get to it eventually. She said, her name is Annie LeBeau. I don't know, is she a friend of yours, Lorraine? I have to let this go past she, the ad. So we, yeah. we we're not well, sure. She might, be a, she might be a Facebook friend of mine, but I, uh, it's not ringing well, the bell right now. I'm just gonna read her comment. And, it, and she said, uh, I guess this is when we were talking about like what, what songs to play of yours during the show. She said, oh, you've got to try to play very unbecoming and hear her great story about he, how she wrote it because of what her husband said. Oh. So is that the story? Really? Her? Yes. Very unbecoming. Oh, yes. So now, okay, I, I knew she had to be onto something with that comment. <laughs> so, yes, I, you know what? I, I wish I had, maybe it was in the liner notes, but I, I think it must have been, it must have been Tony who used that, who used that expression, very unbecoming. And oh. I turned it into something else. I wrote that with, with Tony, my husband and yeah. Eddie Arkin. 
And um, it was first on an album I did called The Body Remembers, which was before all this long stretch of albums I've, I've done. And then I redid it with um, Cheryl Benteen and Janice Siegel doing um, this, uh, these vocal parts that Eddie, Eddie wrote. Okay. And I, I, I completely forgot about that. It was about some comment that Tony made, <laughs> but he, I think it was because I was complaining and uh, being real down in the mouth. And he said, you know, when, when you, you talk like that, it's just very unbecoming. Wow. I think that's what happened. But um, I, I turned it into a song. It's a little bit like the rules don't apply, but it's more about fear. Like, you know, um, getting caught up in this idea that everything's going to be terrible. The, the, the rap, so to speak, because I had this fear that in 30 years I'd be frail, destitute and alone, nothing to show for my life, nothing, living in a house of cats, afraid to go to the store. So you know, I was talking about somebody who was the age I am now, and I am not living in a house of cats. I have only Albert, and I'm not afraid to go to the store because I have Instacart. Oh, uh, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> but in, in any case, it's just kind of a just kind of an offbeat song, and I had a lot of fun with these these two women doing the parts. Let's listen to a chorus. Uh, yeah, let's listen to a, a little bit of uh, Very Unbecoming. Okay. I, I, I just have to stop because I have to ask you who, 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 somebody did all this arranging. It's just so brilliant. It's so wonderful. This is, oh God. Look, would you take? It must look? have been. It must have been Eddie. I'm assuming. And does he um, write out the charts for everyone in the studio? He does the He he does meticulous charts for everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. I have nothing to do with the music. But ever. It, it's fabulous because it, it's just some sort of serendipitous thing that you that you are working with this person because it captures what comes out of you and the, the lyric. It's, 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 it's just a great match, you two. It, it, it is serendipitous. As a matter of fact, that's a favorite word of Eddie's. But yeah, uh -huh. um, we, it, it, we just kind of, um, we're, we're in the same vibe tribe. And I feel that way the vibe uh, about Shelly and Russell too, and, and Dave too, although I don't see him very, very often. I've never met Dave. I, I admire him greatly. Let's yeah. listen. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just have so many. I listen to this music and maybe, you know, I, uh, who I am. I mean, I'm just, I also, unfortunately, uh, become academic and start listening and going this and that and this and that. You know what I mean? Like, I can't help that. But let's hear. I was stuck in a rut. And I was explaining to you how I had this fear that in 30 years I'd be frail, destitute and alone, nothing to show for my life, nothing. Living in a house of cats, afraid to go to the store, not so attractive anymore. I was going on about it at great length. All of a sudden I stopped and sighed and you replied. I can hear every word you say, but it's very unbecoming. Once in a while you may feel that way, but it's very unbecoming. There's so much to worry about. It can take up absolutely all your time. The cruel tricks of fate, the ravages of age, the decline of music, the way the world is run. It's enough to make you sabotage your fun. Just waiting for the ax to fall. You watch the news so often you're in thrall. Afraid you'll take off through the roof the way your nerves are humming. And it's very unbecoming Now and again you may feel that way But it's very unbecoming I used to be terrified of being betrayed, right? And I'd made this guy the center of my life He'd stay out late at night I'd lie there and count the passing cars 51, 52 at the time This seemed like nothing I could do He'd never come over, never call Invariably I'd wake up fuming about it all have screaming arguments with him in my head. Then one morning I looked in the mirror and I said, I can see how upset you are, but it's very unbecoming. You 
You've taken this quite a bit too far And it's very unbecoming Oh, I can hear every word you say But it's very unbecoming Now and again you might feel this way But it's very unbecoming Yeah. Oh. You <laughs> I love, I just love your writing. And you have a spectacular sense of rhythm. Oh, man. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, you know, I was married to a drummer for 29 years. And um, I, I, I hope, I like to think that some of it rubbed off on me because he, sometimes he would say, no, don't do that. Do like this little triplet thing instead. He, he kind of helped me with my phrasing as have other musicians I've worked with, but I, I appreciate that because I know. Oh, I, I send some of my students just the drum tracks to sing to so that they can. Tony used to have this wow. thing. It was called, uh, uh, I made a little Facebook video once. I don't know if I could find it. It's called fun with subdivisions. It was like one, two, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. It was like, it, very challenging, <laughs> but he, but we used to, to do things like that just, just for fun. Yeah. I just yeah. love on that song and in so many of your songs, how you seamlessly go from your talk, from talking to us to then singing. I mean, it's just a seamless transition because a lot of that where you're, you're talking about the, uh, your, your, trials and tribulations, so to speak. And then you can go from talking right into to singing. And I, I just, I don't think, I can't think of another uh, vocalist who can, who, who has mastered that like you have. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that very much. I, I, that's what I try to do. Cause I, I don't, as I said, I don't consider myself to have a, a spectacular voice but I just want to be as much myself as I can and that's kind of Nancy, what the whole speech level singing thing um, takes you toward is not feeling that you have to you're, go into a whole other mode to sing. You're just not kind pushing, of, you're allowing the sound to just leave exactly. you. Exactly. And, and I talk about this all the time to my students. Your, your singing should not be any louder than your speaking voice ever. Not really. Yeah. You can make that choice. And Lord knows, I love to sing a blues and I love to belt but it happens in moments in a night, not all night long. Yeah, I, when I record, I'm like this close to the to the pop screen. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, a quarter of an inch and there's like, turn it up, turn it up. Or I just, I turn myself up, turn myself up, turn myself up. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Let's, I, let's, can we I turn myself down. <laughs> I don't what did you say, Eric? Well, I was just going to tell Nancy, you, I think we can speak for the, uh, the all of Lorraine's fans and say, aren't we happy that she, she didn't go into the food services industry? I just, I sucked at it so badly. <laughs> I, I would forget orders and it was always something like pork chops that took the longest. Oh dear. You found this, is, listen, you found your, I, I know you had aspirations of becoming an actress uh, but but you really did find your calling as uh, as a songwriter and as a lyricist and and uh, we're all the better for it. So well, and that's, that's that's very sweet of you. I really could kind of cheer up almost, but I I I feel especially grateful now that we're all isolated. I think people are beginning to crack, mm. um, and uh, I just I've been been waiting to do this album for for so long and we finally figured out a way to 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 begin getting it going and i just um i i'm i just feel fortunate to have something i can do that i like to do that i can uh work on in my own private space yeah yeah i was hoping you would maybe give us a little uh short timeline i mean you've lived a lot of places you're from new york yeah and i do want to get we, we most we certainly wanted to talk about you, but we can't uh, have the evening go away without talking about your dad. My dad? Yeah, and yeah. So. Oh, that's my favorite. I was ready, Nance. I was ready. Yeah, you were just <laughs> jumped on that. Um, that's my, my beautiful mom, Jane Feather, Duke Ellington, of course, my dad. And that is 
a club called the Famous Door in in New York. I, mm. I'm pretty sure that's where that was taken. <laughs> so, um, what a great yeah, I, I grew up with um, a, a famous jazz writer father. I had no idea what that even meant, but he mm. was home a lot, tap tap tapping away and writing reviews and putting together the Encyclopedia of Jazz, and he, and he wrote hundreds of songs. Mm. Did he? He yes, that that was mainly how he he uh, how he uh, paid the rent and put food on the table. He wrote blues songs, and which is strange because he's this English guy who came over here. He wrote something. I think he made one of his most successful was "How Blue Can You Get" for BB King. It's mm. it's wow. been sampled by various rock groups, and he's written songs that were recorded by Aretha Franklin. Peggy Lee, Sarah Vaughn, Mel Torme, <clears throat> hundred, hundreds of songs. So that's when I learned what it was to be a, a songwriter. I was gonna say, and, that's where you got your taste of that, indeed. Yes, and um, he took me, when I, very, when I first started writing songs, he went, well, you'll be joining ASCAP now. There, I didn't even know there was a thing called BMI because that was not our, society. Yeah. We were out of an ASCAP family. So he took me to an ASCAP meeting and I met uh, Sammy Khan and mm -hmm. all of these people who had written the beautiful classic ballads and film scores. And it was perfect because they showed a slide show about um, how when, when uh, writers wanted to get paid for their music on the radio, they were just told to sort of go jump in a lake. And uh, they, they fought and fought. And now, of course, things have gotten bad in, in a whole new way. But yep. uh, ASCAP continues the good fight. <clears throat> uh, a good you friend know. of mine, Alex you Shapiro, know. is a woman who's on the board. And BMI does. And the Grammy Association does, too. So the, it, it's still possible to make a living from, from songwriting. But it's a, it's a struggle. They, they fight all the time. I was going to ask you if you but, knew. But um, anyway, my dad was uh, was a, an, an incredible, accomplished person and and a very good father too, and and really supportive. There he is with my godmother, Billie Holiday. I mean, I mean like, for real, your godmother, like she, my yeah, well, she um, she didn't see to my religious upbringing. I mean that, but she, when my mother was pregnant, um, she said, "Oh, I I want to be the godmother," and they. Of course, they, they said, great. And my first name is Billy. Uh, my, my whole name is Billy Jane Lee Lorraine Feather. Oh. Jane for my mom, Lee for Peggy Lee, who was her roommate. Wow. You have a picture of that, Eric? No. <laughs> oh, God. you know what? I, sh I should. Yeah, I, I, could probably, I could probably get it. Like, I could probably get it. Oh, Bye. I'm sorry. I sure didn't mean to put you on the spot. How would you? How would you Gosh, you know, I mean. No, no, wait, no. Isn't there something about Sweet Lorraine and you and the song? Yeah, and the, and the song Sweet Lorraine. That was, um, that was my, the last of my four names, Billy Jane, Lee Lorraine. But, yeah, but yeah I, I grew up uh, with all these people around. Dizzy Gillespie was very close to my folks. Benny Carter was my father's best friend in LA and played the saxophone at, at his deathbed in Encino. And I, 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 uh, I don't think I would have become a singer or a lyricist if I hadn't had that around me and to, to understand when I was a kid and just have seep into me. Well, there's Peggy Lee. There's Peggy I, could, Lee. I, could, I, I couldn't find a, a photo of of your 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 dad and Peggy, but I thought I would at least just show how beautiful Peggy Lee was. And oh God, she really was. And she was a, a huge influence on me. How about you, Lorraine? Uh, yeah, very much so because mm. she she had this quiet simmer, and she she never pushed. She was very musical and had she had a great sense of time. Mm. Oh boy, she, and, in my opinion, was one of the first. Um, white jazz singers that really, really touched on the blues. She really had the blues in her voice. Yeah, and, you're right. Yeah, I think it's true. I mean, we all, we're all aware of Anita O'Day, but that's another whole kind of that's thing. That's a whole different deal. Pe Peggy yeah. had huge commercial success, which when you're talking about commercial success, this this is a person who is 
still seeped in the blues, which is unusual. You know? Yeah, you're right, Nancy. It's an unusual thing. Um, your dad, your dad uh, reviewed my first record. Did he like it? Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. I was just a oh, young guy. Right? Didn't know what I was doing, and he <laughs> he wrote a wonderful review. He mentioned that I sounded a little poppy, and he was right because I wasn't seeped in jazz yet. I didn't. Yeah. I only loved it. I didn't really do it well yet, you know. But he said Nancy's a singer to look out for, and I've cherished that all my life. I oh. I still have it up on my site. I just want you guys to know out there, all my singers and friends that are out there, if if, if you were uh, lucky enough to have Leonard Feather review, he was he was the cat. He was he was the uh, yeah. There's a word. What is it, Eric? Well, I mean, when I think of 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 jazz critics, jazz journalists. I mean, to me, Leonard Feather is the gold standard. That's what I meant, the gold standard. I couldn't find Well, I, yeah, I, I'm, it's hard. I can't be objective because I, he was my dad and I loved him, but I just thought that when he, when he believed in somebody and oh, wait, felt oh, wait, strongly oh, wait. about them. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, do you see Monkey Squeaker over well, there? there? There's oh, Abigail. Oh, you missed her. I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Albert. I I Albert's, just, just Albert's asleep now. She won't come back. She's very shy. Wait a minute. We, we've put um, we put Albert to sleep? This show hasn't been interesting. <laughs> well, he, yeah, he's he's on the couch. I, 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 could go, I could go get him, you know, if you wanted to no, say goodbye. But uh, It's all right. There's one question. Know. A question we have from the chat, and I, I, I asked, the chat if they had any questions for you and this is a question that quite frankly is probably going to be tough for you to answer uh because i'm sure they're all special uh but uh, chick bisberg had a question for you and that is which of your albums is your favorite and oh, that's why a good question. i mean do you uh, have one that stands above the rest or <clears throat> i like picking your favorite child, I suppose. I mean, it's. Not... I just I don't think I can do that because there are yeah. there, uh, there are aspects of all of them. Like the yeah. the first of this bunch of a dozen albums was the Fats Waller one. I started right after my mother passed, right before she passed away, just mm. for fun. I wrote lyrics to to a Fats Waller piece and I sent it to Dick Kyman, mm. who um, called me and said, "Oh, you should." You need to do a whole album of these. I will play on it. Go find someone else until I'm free, but you need to do a whole album of these. And then my, my mother passed on and he called again. He said, you, you need something to distract you. Keep doing it. And it was very challenging. And it was just like jumping off a cliff, but it was so special to me because I obsessively thought about these complicated songs all the time and sang the notes in my head and thought of counter melodies. So it was, that was a very precious experience to me. But since I began writing with my, my current co-writers, something new happened because we, I wasn't drawing on the past. So I would say, this isn't a really good answer for, for Chick particularly, but I would say that what I've done from 2010 on, like the second half is especially meaningful to me because I developed these creative relationships with with Eddie and Russ and Shelley, um, and it we were we were doing something new. So I there um, there's selections from all of those albums yeah. that are, are oh, sure. you know really precious to me for one one reason or another. <clears throat> Absolutely, and and uh, you know we should mention too uh, that three of your recordings um 2011 um i guess that would be 20 three of three grammy nominations to your credit i guess the first one was uh was ages. ages then tales yes. of the unusual and then uh, attachments correct well i have three three for me as a as an artist which oh, were right. uh, ages flirting with disaster and attachments and then shelly burr got two arrangement nominations oh. Okay. as well one from flirting with disaster for a song called be my muse and one from tales of the unusual which was a 
a song we wrote about the X-Files called Out There. Oh, mm. I did want to mention also that I've been working on two musicals with Nan Schwartz, who is a composer. Do you know, do you know Nan? I know the name. I know the name, and I, and I did read that you had a musical in the work, so I, we'd love to hear about it, yeah. Well, uh, Nan and I um, did some work on an album, uh, on a, a, a musical created by this woman named Kat Dubois, who lives in Paris. She's an expat called Le Lavoir au Cancan. And it had a, a workshop in Paris late last year. So there was that. And then Nan and I decided to, to get a property to work on ourselves. And I read some books. She gave me one that I liked called The Grammarians by a very popular mm. author named Kathleen Shine. It's about identical twins who are obsessed with words. So I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's a, it's, it's a unique book. And we, we've written one song and scene. And now Nan and I are going to start on the second. But we, we got Kathy's approval. She's going to be the executive producers. So um, it's, it's an adventure. It's, it's a, something completely different. And, uh, it's, and it's really cool. I have a friend writing a screen, uh, working on a screenplay right now. It's a, it's a really, it's a big undertaking. It's a lot. It's a lot in the rewrites and the, you know, all the stuff. It's, it's really something. Um, I, I'm sorry. Continue, I'll tell you. Guys. I had something to say and then well, it just flittered away. I just wanted to throw this out. I, I again, in doing my my research as a journalist, Nance, I discovered that um, you wrote the <laughs> lyrics to a song, Lorraine, that was performed at an, uh, an opening ceremony at, a, at the Olympics, correct? By Jesse Norman? Yes, that's right. With Mark Waters. With Mark Waters. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, the the songs I wrote with Mark were mostly for, for animation, but he was the, the conductor, musical director for the Olympics in 1996. And the, the, uh, the producer of the whole event, uh, Don Misher, mm -hmm. uh, had asked Jesse Norman if she might be open to doing so, uh, something new. And she said, maybe. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to write something for um, Sidious Altius, 40th, faster, higher, stronger, which is the, the motto of the Olympics. And right. we, we wrote something and she liked it. And I, I got to go to the opening ceremonies and um, mm. it, was, it, it was exciting. It was, it was unique. I imagine. And, that. and she, was, she was wonderful. Mm. Yeah, what a voice. What a voice. What a voice. A very, very, very queenly, but mm -hmm. not pretentious at all. She just had a, a natural um, regality about her. And I'm, I'm sorry that she's gone. Yeah, I know. We, uh, she just yeah. passed, I think it was last year, I believe. I, yeah, not long ago at all. Or maybe maybe even earlier this year. I, I mean, this year felt like a whole decade, so it's, it's hard to... I know. Uh, yeah, time has become so elastic and strange. Oh. <laughs> I asked the question, what is time anymore? I don't, I don't know. Go ahead, Nance. No, I just think it's just such a great way to put it. I, I've lost track of time completely with us yeah. being home all the time like this. Well, I wrote a, a song. Hi, hi Abigail. Uh, she's, she's got some camera time now. Hi again. Oh, she's over there. Yeah, I can see her. She, she just walked. Oh, over. Abigail. Squeaky. Oh, mommy's hair. Oh, that, she's <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> I wrote a I wrote a I wrote a I wrote the lyrics to something about um, COVID. I wrote it right after it happened, and I'm having a heck of a time putting music to it. So maybe off the the record, you can you can help me think of someone that might want to write the music. I it, it it's, it's called What Became of Spring, Ooh. Hmm. because it was gone. I mean, there's no spring. I know. We, we missed a season, a couple of them, really. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. We have. This is a great quote, a uh, great quote, a great quam, uh, uh, comment, a great comment from Debbie Garcia Daly, who says, it is never, ne it's never too late to create. Thanks for this inoculating conversation. Well, thank you for tuning in, Debbie. And I'm sure Lorraine, you, Debbie. Would, Lorraine would agree and Nancy would agree. Thank it you. is never too late to create and there's always different avenues to travel down that you 
haven't maybe yet explored. And, and that's the beauty of, of music. Yeah, I agree. That's true. Um, Debbie, she's out in LA. So you went from New York to where? Tell to, us, tell us your little. Um, I went. For, I was I was born in New York. We uh, um, at One Sheridan Square above Cafe Society downtown, and then we moved up to 106 in Riverside. Nice. Yeah, it was really nice. It, it ruined me for life because it had a view of the river. It was so great. Yeah. Um, then we moved to Los Angeles and lived up a, um, below Mulholland Drive in Studio City. I was very disoriented. I didn't care for it out there at all. But um, I, was, I was there and I, uh, graduated from Hollywood High and then came back to New York to try and be an actress and just moved from one apartment to another every six months or so. Finally went back to LA because I had started singing and I thought, well, maybe I should, I should be back in Los Angeles. Um, met Tony, got married, and he was playing drums for this group called the Rippingtons and for David Benoit and for mm -hmm. also for Peggy Lee and Lainey Kazan and just a, a host of different people. But he became interested in the internet. He had a knack for it. And we wound up moving to the Bay Area because he got a job at Silicon Graphics. So, wow. and we were living on the San Mateo coast side. Then uh, he did that for a while. He wound up running the global web team, then got laid off. And we wanted to go someplace where we could both work from home, which we were then doing and have space for our dogs. And we, we just impulsively moved to the San Juan Islands, Orcas Island, got amicably divorced a few years later, both went to LA and then I moved to Worcester for a couple of years and now I'm here. Oh, wow, yeah. that's a lot. I, they have a good jazz station in Worcester. I think they play both of our records there. W-I-C-N. Yes. Yes, yeah. shout out to Miss Jo Wilson. Yes, I've gone there and performed. They're lovely people there. They're very lovely people. It's a, it's a terrific station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I will say this has certainly been one of my favorite hours. How about you, Eric? Oh, I, I have enjoyed it. Oh. I have enjoyed it thoroughly talking to, uh, to two just uh, wonderful, wonderful, um, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, wonderful uh, messenger, <laughs> messengers of song and, and two, uh -huh. Rochester, two Rochester ladies. And uh, no, this has been uh, fantastic. I've learned, uh, I've learned a great deal. Uh, and Aww. I even learned one other little quick tidbit about your dad. And I don't know why I probably did know this and it just slipped my mind because I played the song so many times. I had forgotten that your dad wrote the lyrics to Whisper Not. Yes. So, the, the classic, uh, of course, when I think of the, you know, I think of Benny Dolson, uh, who, um, <clears throat> who, you know, wrote the music and your dad did the lyrics. And of course, I've heard that that song done. You've probably recorded, I guess you were, you've recorded it, I guess, right? No, I, I haven't recorded any songs of my dad's with the exception of Mighty Like the Blues okay. on my Ellington album. And I added another first one, but um uh, yeah, it, that's a beautiful song, and, and he's be, you just you wouldn't believe all the different the different um, varieties of of songs he's he wrote a a gorgeous instrumental that uh, Oliver Nelson played called I Remember Bird, mm. but mm. a lot of blues tunes, a lot of blues, Little Richard recorded something of his. Um, interesting. There's a lot of British. The British are very interested in American blues, and they always have been. They always. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, the Rolling Stones just stole everything from from us. You know. Well, yeah, that's why. But my my dad had a little bit of a, a problem with rock music because he felt it was kind of stolen. But he fell in love with jazz when he was in a, a, a record store and heard West End Blues mm. by Armstrong. And that was it. So I, years later, I, there's a picture of the two of them at Disneyland smiling from ear to ear. And I thought my dad, he just landed in heaven to be able to really meet this person and, and make friends with him. 
Wow. That's, that's, yeah. that's the beauty of you being in Los Angeles and New York and having all these wonderful experiences. They've made you who you are today. And I can tell yeah. you, we are all very grateful for who you are today and keep going and keep writing. Oh, thank you. The, la oh, the last picture I'm going to share, your dad and, and, and uh, Benny Carter and Satchmo and a gentleman named Robert Gotham. Yeah. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing that, you know, again, your father, how many people can say they were in pictures with Duke Ellington and Billy Holiday and, and uh, Louis Armstrong and uh, no, Lord knows the countless number of other musicians that uh, your dad got to uh, know through the years. And, and you've just carried I, on. I know. The, They're very precious the to me. Legacy. What? I mean, I turn the phone around and show you some of my autographed pictures, but it would probably be just my living room's a mess, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but they're all, but they're all on my um, my Facebook site in the vintage jazz thing. Oh, you put up great stuff. I love following what you put up. Your dad's childhood. I mean, where do you think he got exposed to jazz like that, or did he just find it, or as they say, it found him? You know, it found him in a in a record store. He he heard this. Uh, West End Blues, Louis Armstrong, West End Blues, and it just, it just completely, it took over his life. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. John Hammond met him at the boat. He was, I think, 20. Wow. It's quite extraordinary. What a life. You better write a book. You going to write a book? No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants me to write one. I'm going, oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, uh, you want to plug your website, Lorraine? Sure, it's LorraineFeather.com. Okay. And um, it, my, my albums are there if anybody would like to purchase them digitally yes. or, or otherwise. And uh, my new one will be out sometime next year. Right, sometime, we don't, yeah. Can't really sometime, I don't know, maybe May, but I, I can't say for sure. Hmm. Well, fingers crossed, we're, we're, we look forward, we look forward to the, uh, to the next record. And uh, by the way, thank you, Debbie Garcia. Ambassadors of song would probably have been the best way for me to phrase what it's been like to speak with both you, Lorraine, and my dear, dear friend, Miss Nancy Kelly. You're, you're both wonderful ambassadors of song. And uh, a lot of great comments here. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. You can go back and watch the show. We keep it up if you want to. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, a, a few people asked me where they can watch it later. So if, if you can just give me the information, I'll, I'll post the link. Well, tomorrow, I also, we have, a, we have a YouTube page that we keep for all the That's shows. what I wanted to know so about. That's probably yeah. the best link that I can give you. And, and then you can see, I'll do that. I do that in the morning, I put it up there. If so. you would, yeah, that's oh, yeah. great. And I'll, I'll pass it along. All right. So, all right, well, th I, thank you so much for having me on. It's just flown by and I, I really have loved talking to you. This was great. I well, was we, so informative and joyful. And we have adored talking to you. We loved seeing Albert earlier. And, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say too, I love the, uh, the uh, art you have behind you. Uh, uh, the, um, Maybe did you bring ship... those with you, or did you find them here? Are you, are you talking about the ship's figurehead thing? The figure, the figurehead. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That is oh, wonderful. yeah. I got that at a place called Arte de Mexico oh. in Los Angeles. They they just have stuff from all over the world. I've carried it with me every mm. place every place I've been, and including um, some some homes that that. Uh, could not accommodate its weight. So I just had it lying on the floor, <laughs> but I, I was able to, to put it here and it's uh, it's it's gonna stick with me wherever I may vibe. go. It's really got a vibe, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, I but stop. really I, I just, I, the the coolest thing about this room, I'm gesturing to something you can't see, yeah. are the jazz pictures, which wow. I, I um, you know, anybody who wants to see them can just go to my website there. I think they're all, public in the vintage oh, jazz. So I have one of George Shearing playing the accordion. He wow. looks like he was 18. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, um, tell you what, Nance, it'd be nice to maybe take a road trip uh, to Rochester and get a nice little tour of uh, this, this home. I would love that. Just, <laughs> just give me a heads up so that I can clean. We'll have, 
<laughs> we'll, have, well, we'll have our masks on. Don't worry, you know, so. Yeah, we'll have a properly socially distanced yeah. Rochester hang. Let's do that. I look forward to that, but, but people can check out the all your albums and your bio and the gallery. It's at LorraineFeather.com. Um, and again, this, uh, this has been an absolute treat. And uh, for me too. I, thank, I thank Nancy for reaching out to you and for you agreeing to do the show and, and everybody in the audience has, has thoroughly enjoyed it and they can watch it back uh, uh, on our, on our YouTube channel. So yeah, to do that. I'll pass that along. All okay. right, you guys. All Have right. A good evening. Thanks a lot. Take care. Be safe, Lorraine. And uh, until Be next safe. time. Okay. All right. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye, Nance. Bye-bye.